Now that's how you do it. Let me welcome you to my first gunship guide for Armour 3. I hope you take away some valuable tips and tricks about how to bring death from above in Armour 3 skies. Without further ado, let's get right in. Here we have the AH-9 Pawnee, one of my favourite helicopters in armour. Really packs a punch if you know how to utilise it properly. To begin, I would recommend going back to my Landings 101 Beginners video to make sure you have a similar control set up to me because I'm going to be talking about putting these specific controls into practice in a gunship environment. Obviously, the flight model for the Hummingbird and Pawnee are identical. There will, however, be a major difference in your styles of flying these two choppers. The Pawnee can operate as a reconnaissance aircraft using its armament for self-defense, but most typically, it will function in the CAS or close air support category. This means your maneuvers will need to be quickly executed reactions to enemy fire and movements begin, I'm going to put this pyramid of target priorities on screen. Of course, there are exceptions to this pyramid as and when certain situations arise on the battlefield. This comes down to pilot judgment over many hundreds of hours practicing. As a rule of thumb, the Jets and Op 4 Xi'an sit at the top of the food chain. They will pursue your movements, use their radar to AA you and generally make your life hell. They are the hardest assets to evade and destroy. Below that lie enemy attack helicopters such as the Cashman and Blackfoot. These can carry different armaments thanks to the Jets DLC update so it is possible to get AA locked much more frequently by this class of aircraft now. They are difficult to evade because because they also have radar and they're in the air with you, but not as hard as the jets. Next to the attack helicopters are the anti-air tanks, the Tigris or Cheetah from Op4 and Blue4 respectively. These are a menace and when positioned in difficult to attack positions like hillsides in areas of foliage, they are near impossible to take out without proper ordnance and teamwork. Their presence of radar means they are difficult to evade, however because they are on the ground they can be evaded with a combination of luck and quick evasive maneuvers. Underneath the AA tanks are the man pads or portable AA launchers. These are in some ways worse than the AA tank because they don't show up on radar as red blocks. Spotting them relies on beep counting, which we'll talk about later, thermal imaging and rocket vapour trails. And alongside anti-air launchers are the other light attack helicopters such as the armed Orca, Hellcat and Pawnee. Because these have fixed forward firing guns and no lock-ons, you have quite a few tools at your disposal. If he's on your 6, look back briefly. If he's far back, you can gain altitude, bank around and face him, drinking to avoid any potential fire he may try to give you. When he tries to bank up, he'll gain altitude massively. You can play with this to your advantage and lead him up and up and up. He'll either crash because he has no ground references anymore, causing him to slide backwards, or he'll lose all his speed by trying to recover, making him a sitting duck. Dive down and finish the job. If he's close and dealing damage, you want to drink side to side to avoid rocket attacks. Do not, I repeat, do not fly in a straight line. It is literally suicide. The best thing you can do is one of these two things. Increase speed and do long sweeping turns. This will throw his aim off, making you less susceptible to rocket attacks and almost immune from miniguns. Then you can lure him to your base's AA. The other option is difficult but effective. Bank hard to one side, gaining as much speed as possible. Careful not to get too low here as any rockets he fire will splash damage you. Once he's fired a lot of his ordnance, fly in a straight line. This will cause him to level out. When he's done this, you can aggressively and unpredictably swing to one side pitching up as you do so. Watch how I maintain a tight arc close to the ground. Track IR comes in handy here, but the main thing is you keep pitching up to follow him. You should be on his six by now, but not for long. He will be turning around to face you as well. When you have the upper hand an element of surprise, fire your rockets first and miniguns last, although that part is subjective to the pilot. A strafe of rockets as you swing around is relatively easy here. You've bled off your speed in 
the arc, he swung round to meet you, so you're both almost still stopped for a few seconds, which gives you a chance to light him up and get the kill. Below, all of the light helicopters are APCs, HMGs, RPGs and any other form of heavy caliber or mounted weaponry such as the 50 cal, Navid or Hunter HMG to name a few. These can be avoided with relative ease, however, situationally they can cause havoc if at the wrong place and the wrong time, such as during auto rotation or a low pass. So now we've gone over the basic threats you'll encounter as a Pawnee or light cast helicopter pilot, I'll be telling you how to deal with these assets by either evading or neutralizing them. With the jets, you want to evade as soon as you spot them if possible by flying nap of the earth which means masking with the terrain elements around you. This will make it harder for the jet pilot to get a lead on you, even if you're on his radar, because he won't be able to get an optimal angle of attack due to all the obstacles and terrain coverage. If this fails, fall back onto the old school dogfighting technique, which is to bleed speed and let him fall in front of you. If you can time this right and lead him into a false sense of security, you can sometimes hit him with rockets on the way out of his strafe. This tactic works best on jets and attack helicopters as well as other light aircraft chasing you. To perform it, bank left or right and use your emergency pitch up key. Keep the throttle full power, you'll need all the lift you can get here and remain as low as possible. This arc manoeuvre allows me to bleed off speed quickly. If I were to do the same manoeuvre but gain altitude directly instead, he'd blast me out the sky quicker than you can say Kabui and it's bye bye helicopter. If the jet has engaged you before you've spotted it, you can either perform a defensive manoeuvre by banking upwards quickly, then drinking from side to side aggressively with your side click to mess with his aim. Once you've turned around, you can start lighting him up on his strafe. The beauty of attacking jets is that they have a limited flight path to work with. A helicopter can hover and follow the jet's movements, whereas the jet will be stuck in a relatively forward motion of flight, leaving little room for evasion. If you get this right, a salvo of rockets will either disable or destroy him. These techniques carry across to attack helicopters, however the difference is that the gunner camera can follow you more effectively than the forward facing guns on a jet. To outfly a good attack helicopter gunner and pilot crew in a Pawnee is tough, but doable. Some quick side to side drinks unpredictable movements with the cyclic and masking with terrain is your best bet. If you're about 500 to 1000 meters away with little to no cover, you need to perform a defensive maneuver by flying towards the gunfire. This sounds scary, but trust me, it's difficult for the gunner to aim lower and lower as you approach. His zero ring will be less effective and eventually he'll reach the limits of the camera, rendering his capabilities useless. At this point, you'll notice no more rounds leaving the attack helicopter and you can bank up and try to fire some rockets at him. If you're over a thousand meters away, fly nap of the earth and below radar levels. Mask with the landscape, making a large flank around his known position. Once you're in a good spot, locate him and start gaining altitude. You'll want to be on his radar for as little as possible ideally just before you are set up to fire on him. The weak spots of the attack helicopters are underneath, directly above and in the rear. Bob, 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 how many pawnees have you cost me? This guy is a royal pain in the ass, but he does have some counters, so listen up. The radar is fairly low tech on the anti-air tanks, so if you can see their tank, they can see you. But if you disappear behind terrain, you vanish for them. If you have spotted an AA tank before they've spotted you, or have taken fire, you can perform a similar tactic to the attack helo maneuver. You take a long flank around, keeping his location as a waypoint. If he's an idiot, like most bobs, you can strike him in the backside with a salvo of around 20 rockets to finish the job. Careful though, if he is semi-competent, he'll be watching his radar ready to swivel around and mince you before you get the chance. 
The key is positioning and illusion. Make him think you've buzzed off back to base. Make him think he's safe. Then take the long route around and hit him in the back. It's worked dozens of times for me. It just takes practice, luck and confidence in your flying. Let's say you screw up your rocket run and you're now lined up in his sights as you fly over him or you've just spotted an AA tank and its barrels are moving towards you. You need to be fast or you will die. The one who reacts first wins. You want to dive down to a very low altitude, say no more than 8 meters, and visualize his line of sight. Imagine his gun sight. Could he see you if you ducked in front of that tree line? This is very fine grained stuff. Sometimes you'll be a few feet away from the rattling cannons of the dreaded Tigris, but it will and can save you. In terms of AA man pads, they are very difficult to avoid, especially at closer ranges, since the flares on cough won't activate in time when using the countermeasure perk. I'd recommend taking this perk anyway, but when you do take any sort of missile signature and causes the flares to fire, pump out a few more manually whilst diving down. If you're lucky, you can sometimes see the actual missile path and visualize its direction. You want to visualize the firer's position and make it as hard as possible for him to reload, relock, and refire. Countering these guys is a case of careful reconnaissance and heavy reliance on intel from your team. Otherwise, it's a case of luck of the draw and not making simple pilot errors like flying too high and too slow. The bigger the window, the bigger the risk. I'll also mention the beep counting I spoke about earlier. Basically, you can gain intel on a missile firing location by counting the amount of seconds it takes for the countermeasures to automatically fire and the missile's detonation. The countermeasure perk fires flares as soon as the missile leaves the vehicle or rocket launcher. That could be 2,000 meters away from a Blackfoot or 30 meters from an infantryman. This is crucial as it sometimes allows you to narrow down an anti-air location. Any type of AA release on my Pawnee causes me to go into autopilot evasion mode. I immediately flare again duck down to the buildings and mask with the terrain, increasing speed rapidly. It's important to note that the faster you are going, the less likely the missile is to hitting you. I'm not sure if this is realistic on a simulation level, but I've just noticed that hovering or dead still helicopters seem to explode instantly even with constant flares being pumped out. Lastly, the heavy and light machine guns and high caliber weaponry such as the Cyrus, Zafir, SPMG and Navid. The glass on the Pawnee is very very weak at certain ranges. As a general rule of thumb, with ground fire, you want to be above what's called the small arms fire band. Sometimes cough doesn't allow you to fly higher because of AA being such a present threat. But as general practice for let's say a milsim mission, masking with high level features of terrain such as mountain ranges is your best bet. If you're in a strafe and you take heavy fire, you need to learn two things. Firstly, to multitask. It's said that Apache pilots are able to be like chameleons. They can focus on the instrument readings in their monocle reticule whilst looking out of their cockpit during flight. In this case, you need to be looking at your target and flicking a glance at the engine readings in the top left. This is in case the person firing deals enough damage to warrant an auto-rotation, in which case you need to react pretty swiftly. Secondly, you don't want to be greedy and tunnel visioned in. You can always reapproach for another strafe later, but all too often I see good pilots get picked off by some guy on the ground because he wanted to kill so much he kept getting lower and lower and lower and made himself an easy shot. Your pilot ticker is something which you develop over time but it's basically your inner intuition telling you now's the time to leave when it speaks listen and get out of there here i have two side by side comparisons of flying away in a relatively evasive manner and the other showing violent changes to pitch banking and pedal movement which one is easier to hit as an infantryman the left one of course I can follow and lead that target easily. 
the trick with outplaying enemy fire, especially at range, is making his job leading you as difficult as possible. Keep your speed high, jink around with the pitch up key and throw in some tight barrel turns to really throw him off. Now I've given you the secret sauce, you can go out there and deal some damage. In this video, we've gone over light helicopter attack maneuvers and target prioritization, two integral parts of CAS flight. Next time, we'll be looking into the attack gunships such as the Blackfoot and Cashman, with a few mentions about the Pawnee talking about their armament and role. We'll also be looking into aiming effectively with the Pawnee and utilising the rockets and miniguns. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Leave me a rating and a sub if you did. See you guys later. Tommy out.